From TomDispatch.com, this is TomCast. I'm Timothy McBain. Recently, I had the pleasure of speaking with author and longtime sports columnist for the New York Times, Robert Lipsight. His upcoming memoir, An Accidental Sports Writer, will go on sale in May from HarperCollins. We spoke about the upcoming Super Bowl 45 and what American football reveals about our nation's character. I think there are a few reasons why we like pro football so much and why the Super Bowl is, is such a national holiday. Uh, pro football evokes a kind of retrograde aspect of American life. We always think that baseball, you know, is, takes us back to agrarian uh, times. But, uh, but baseball is really more modern. Baseball has, you know, absorbed immigrants from Latin America, from Asia. And uh, it's, it's kind of a wonderful game in flux. But professional football really has stayed so American. The franchises are owned by Americans uh, who kind of evoke the robber barons of old. They're all guys who got rich on some other kind of business, whether it was cars or pizza or you know stealing from poor people. Um, the players are Americans. And uh, everything about it is so intensely American. Even, even the personnel are all trained in government subsidized universities. And of course, you have paid for so many of those stadiums. And then we get out there and we see this kind of wonderful retrograde violence. It's kind of the frontier again, killing Indians, um, shooting gunslingers in the back, the whole excitement, the American excitement of imperialistic ventures and violence. And I think that that's really uh, what football is, is all about. And, and unlike, unlike some sports, this is not cartoon violence. You know, these guys really do get hurt. Um, they don't get hurt as badly as they are seeming to get hurt on television. This is just breaking bones and tearing tissues. Um, they're hurt in very profound ways that often don't show for 10, 15, 20 years. Now, uh, with uh, a lockout looming, labor problems are uh, coming to the NFL, uh, the uh, owners want to extend the season to two more regular games with a lot more tra trauma, one would uh, imagine, and uh, do nothing more about any kind of health care responsibility. They also give the players less money. Um, it would be interesting uh, to see who prevails in all of this. There's a tendency in the media to uh, kind of dismiss this. And, you know, what's the big deal? This is uh, billionaires against millionaires. But again, the robber barons are very secure politically and financially in their other businesses. Uh, they can afford not being in football, where the players, uh, not only is it their livelihood, but the average player doesn't quite make it to four full years at the NFL. They, uh, they get churned out a lot. Also the fact that so many of them are African Americans. and in a growing consciousness, talking more and more about the plantation aspect of the NFL. Another retro aspect of American life that's being evoked, which is in a kind of way a slavery. Now, this immediately sounds uh, kind of wildly suspect uh, lefty craziness to talk about somebody making a couple of million dollars a year being any kind of a slave. but. You know, if you are being raised in America, in the underclass, being told that your only shot is um, to make it in professional sports, being channeled your whole life uh, towards that, um, it is a kind of at least psychic slavery. Uh, 
one wonders about the real opportunities in American life if this is the direction. Somebody once pointed out that Rockefeller's kids, who obviously all went to college, tended to play soccer, not football. Um, I mean, there's a very good reason not to have your kid play football if you don't want his brain scrambled, unless it's the only way that he is going to make it in this world. Yeah, I mean, people talk about the idea that rugby, for example, is a ruffians game played by gentlemen, and soccer is a gentlemen's game played by ruffians. Football may very well be um, an imperialist game played by thugs. There, there really is a tremendous thug quality to football, and there always has been. I mean, it's not an issue of uh, now that you know the underclass mercenaries are playing for it. Remember, it was a thugs game uh, in the turn of the uh, 20th century uh, when Harvard and Yale were playing it, and Teddy Roosevelt uh, threatened to abolish the game if the violence wasn't curtailed. Um, the reason why it's a, it's a thug's game is because of this kind of relentless push for land. Think about what that game is. That game is that relentless push, pushing people back towards the edge of the frontier the way that we once did. I mean, also the way the, the Brits did in India where the the Romans did it all over the world, Alexander the Great. But we have really perfected that game. Uh, and, um, you know, the kind of that excitement of pushing people back and the defenders being in their way fiercer uh, than the offensive players, you know, the, uh, the Indians, the Viet Cong, the Taliban. You know, all those asymmetrical warriors who kind of come from quick and different places. I think of cornerbacks um, as those indigenous tribes who are trying to keep the white man from taking over their land. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that I even watch a football game that way. I'm kind of thrilled by the, the sheer violence of it uh, and the artistry and um, the, the scientific playmaking. Uh, but if you know, if you needed to watch football that way, in that kind of psychohistorical way, it's really right out there. It's exciting. I think people who, who equate, you know, the, the Super Bowl with the extravaganzas of empire, Habsburg, Roman, you know, pick your empire, um, you know, could, could see the Super Bowl as this kind of last vestige of something super in America. Um, you know, people who, who claim that we're, you know, on the downward slide, you know, point to the fact that we're not that much of a superpower, not that much of an economic, political, or military superpower as we once were. Uh, and so many things in American life uh, are no longer exceptional any longer, except football. I mean, hardly anybody in the world plays football. So, you know, a lot of them play football, uh, as, as they call soccer, but they don't play football. Uh, it's our game. It's never been successfully exported. And I, I really don't know whether that's a failure of colonialism or maybe it's protectionism. Let's just keep it our game. Because as you see, uh, basketball, ice hockey, and baseball eventually are going to be taken over uh, by athletes from other countries. It's beginning to happen. But football is our game. Um, and maybe like, you know, the stereotypical bread and circuses, uh, they will go down as the country does.
Well, you know, when, when the former governor of Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell, you know, accused America and sports fans of being uh, wussies uh, because a snowstorm postponed a game from Sunday to Tuesday, um, I kind of wondered what he really meant. Uh, the game would have been a mess to play. You know, it, there is, a, as we know, you know, a, a kind of artistry to the game. A uh, slippery ball, people falling over, why would that be fun? And why, why do we need to be uncomfortable and cold and wet you know, to watch this game? I don't really think it made a lot of sense. I think it would have made a lot more sense if former Governor Rendell, who is now on MSNBC, uh, had said something like, you know, Americans are such wussies. They're not really even that interested in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq anymore. They don't want to see it on television. They want to watch, I don't know, American Idol, you know, dance to live, live to dance. Uh, they remember, were totally acqui acquiescent a few years ago about no footage of violence or even of caskets coming back. Uh, that uh, is not an issue now, but it's moot because we're bored with those uh, wars. Somehow we've managed to keep those wars at such a comfortable remove uh, that they're not really out there to discomfort us anymore. And I think that's the wussiness. The wussiness of America allowing a volunteer army to fight for us, these mercenaries who are fighting for us now while we are spectators. I think that's the wussiness in American life. Uh, we don't fight our own wars anymore. I mean, I, I'm for the draft. I mean, I'm against war. I don't think we should have any wars, but I'm certainly for the draft. If we're going to fight wars, then I think that everybody should participate, and um, a congressman first, probably. Uh, the author and journalist uh, Richard Reeves had a wonderful line in Truth Dig, the volunteer army is a kind of NFL with guns and we are the spectators. And that's true too. We are spectators to the war now uh, as we are to the Super Bowl.